Can we stand to our feet? Stand to our feet. We're going to take our Bibles to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 9, verse 22. This is what the Bible says. It says, almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Then this little portion is what I want to preach about. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. Without the shedding of blood, there's no pardon. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood. Let us pray. God, I bow my head in your presence. I cannot. You never said I could. You can. You always said you would. Would you sprinkle the blood of Christ on us today? And Lord, would you use us in a tremendous, tremendous way? We sent your presence. We sent you want to come. Have your will and way. <laughs> May we have a suddenly experience as Acts talks about. And Jesus, for all you do, we're going to praise you. For I pray this prayer with a grateful heart. For I pray this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. The importance of the blood. Billy Graham said when he was a young man, he said, I was getting started in ministry. And he said, I received a letter from a professor at Cornell University. He said, upon receiving that letter, I was somewhat taken back. I was flattered. He said in the letter, he was talking about that I had a great talent and I was a great communicator and had the uh, great persuasion ability. And Billy Graham said, I was taken back. And he said, Brother Graham, you will be very successful in ministry if you will just leave out that blood stuff. You'll be very successful if you just leave out that blood stuff. And this was his words. Because no enlightened man or woman will swallow it. Billy Graham said after reading that letter, he said, I had a new commitment <laughs> to preach the blood of Jesus harder than ever before. He said, I had a new commitment to preach the blood of Christ like never before. You say, Pastor, it's really not an issue. Oh, yes, it is an issue. Do you realize I could name major denominations? I will not name them. But I could name major denominations who, out of the music they sing, have removed the words pertaining to the blood. Major denominations literally have said, no, 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 we don't want that blood stuff in our churches. We don't want that blood stuff on our screens. We don't want that blood stuff to be sang about. We want to remove it. Even though 1,300 times the Bible refers to the blood of Jesus Christ, I am convinced that at Rock Springs Church, we have the greatest music anywhere. I believe that. I believe we have wonderful, wonderful music. And you know, we all have preferences about what we would like to sing. You said, Pastor Benny, why should we sing? Well, this is all I know. When we get to heaven, according to Revelation chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, we're going to sing a new song. <laughs> we're going to sing a new song, and ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a song about the blood of the Lamb. Amen? It's going to be a song about the blood of the Lamb. So here's my thought. If we're going to sing about the blood of the Lamb in heaven, doesn't it only make sense that while we're down here on earth, we ought to be singing about the blood of the Lamb? Amen? We ought to be singing about the blood of the Lamb. Now, when we talk about this issue of salvation, I want you to see five things today. I want you to see five things. First of all, I want you to see it started with the blood. It started with the blood. See, I believe this is what happened. I believe God created a man. God created Adam. I truly believe that God looked Adam and over from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. I believe God looked at Adam. He created Adam. He looked him over from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And I believe God said, I can do better. And he created woman. Amen? 
But here's what I want you to know, folks. Uh, male and female, he created them. Amen? Amen. Male and female, he created them. I would say, listen, I, I would say to that young boy that's listening to me today, what am I supposed to be in life? Hear me clearly. You're to be a male. Yes, and that young lady that's listening to me today, what am I to be? You're, you're to be a female. Because, see, God created them male and female. Amen? So somebody said, well, I'm struggling. No, 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 you don't have to struggle. Because you're either male or female. We, listen, folks, we don't need males participating uh, in athletics and swimming in women's sports. No, no, you're a male. You need to participate with the men, and you need to let the women participate with the women. Amen? You say, well, I really don't like preaching like this. Well, I'll tell you what, you really won't like it when a 22-year-old man wants to walk into the restroom with your nine-year-old daughter because he feels female on that day. We better stand for something or we'll fall for everything. So he created them. Male and female. And the Bible says that they sinned. Now, look what the Bible says in Genesis 3, 7. It says, and the eyes of them were both opened, and they knew they were naked. Now, let me explain something to you, folks. Up to this point, they went without clothes, and they felt no guilt. They felt no condemnation. They felt no shame. But after they sinned, the Bible says they knew they were naked. After they sinned. And what did they do? They went and got fig leaves and tried to clothe themselves. Now, they had to be uncomfortable, amen? But they went and they, 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 they got fig leaves. What was they doing, folks? They was trying to deal with their sin. And many times we try to do the same thing. We try to deal with our very own sin. What are you saying, Pastor? Oh, well, I'm better than so-and-so, so I'm okay. I, I was raised up in church. I'm okay. I'm a member of the first church of here, and I'm a member of the first church there. I'm okay. I, I, I've been baptized. You know, many times, folks, we're trying to take care. We're trying to get fig leaves and cover ourselves up. I, I'm better than so-and-so. I, I, know I, I know I don't go to church because all there is down there at the church is a bunch of hypocrites. Well, by the way, folks, that's a cop-out. There hadn't one person walked up to me this summer and said, I need to talk to you, Pastor. I said, oh, okay, let's talk. I'm not going to Panama City. Why are you not going this year? There's too many hypocrites down there. I'll promise you there's hypocrites down there. But we're still running down there, amen? Every time I go in Walmart, there's hypocrites in Walmart. But I still shop. So you might as well get with the hypocrites, Amen. You said, Pastor Benny, is there going to be a few anywhere you go? Yes, always. Let me tell you something. I'd rather go to church with them than go to hell with them. So they tried to cover themselves up, but it didn't work. And we're trying to cover ourselves up, but it don't work. But look what verse 21 says. Unto Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin. God said, take those fig leaves off. I'm going to make coats of skin. Now, you've got to understand, get this, folks. Why did he make coats of skin? It was a blood sacrifice. See, in the very beginning, it was the blood. That's why the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Why did he slay an animal and make them coats? Because, folks, nothing could take care of their sin but the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing could take care of their sin but the blood of Jesus Christ. Look here. Come up real close. Nothing will take care of your sin. Nothing will take care of my sin but the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the only thing that's going to take care of our sin the blood of Jesus. Now look, it started with the blood, but I want you to see something else. It's sacred blood. It's God's blood. You say, wait, pastor. Does God have blood? He did when Jesus was here. He did when Jesus was here. How do you know that? Well, look what Acts 20 and 28 says. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Look, to feed 
the church of God, look, which he hath purchased with his own blood. It took the blood of God. Folks, let me tell you something. It took the sacred blood of God to wash away your sin. Why did it take the blood of God? Because our sin was great. There was a play in Jerusalem, Israel. And scene one was a Jewish father and his wife and their son. And that Jewish mother was fussing on that Jewish father. And she said to him, I wish you would quit making cabinets in the shop. And I would wish you would make crosses for the Roman government. Our lifestyle could be so much better if you would make crosses. And then the drapes dropped. And it was seen too. And it seen too, the little boy was running up to his father. And he was crying. And he said, oh, daddy. Oh, daddy. Oh, daddy. We made the cross that they crucified Jesus on. He said, oh, no, no, son, we, we didn't. There was thousands of crosses that were made. He said, oh, daddy, I was down there. I saw Jesus carrying the cross. Daddy, Jesus fell down. And I got real close to the cross, and I saw something. He said, what did you see, son? He said, daddy, when we made the cross... I slipped back out in your shop and I wrote my name on the cross. And when I fell down and Jesus fell down, I saw my name on the cross, Daddy. My name was on the cross. Folks, listen to me. My name was on the cross. Your name was on the cross. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Romans 8 and 32 says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. I want you to see it started with the blood. I want you to see it's sacred blood. I want you to see it's shed blood. It's shed blood. See, the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. See, every once in a while I hear somebody or I'll hear a song and it will talk about the spilled blood. And I'm thinking, it wasn't spilled blood. If you spill something, it's an accident. Ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't spilled blood. It was intentional. It was intentional. John 10 verse 18 he said, no man takes my life from me, but I lay it down of myself. And if I have the power to lay it down, I have the power to take it up again. Jesus could have called 72,000 angels to deliver him from the cross. One angel in the Bible destroyed 185,000 Assyrians. He could have called 72,000 angels. But ladies and gentlemen, he, choos, he chose not to because he was intentionally shedding his blood for your sin and for my sin. It's always been the shed blood of Christ. The children of Israel were in bondage for 400 years. God was going to free them he said in Exodus 12, I want every family to get a lamb. He said, I want every family to get a lamb. Make sure it's a baby lamb. Make sure it's without spot or blemish. Make sure that it's one year old. And on the 10th day of the month, I want you to bring that lamb into your home. And the Bible says, provide special care for it. So every family in Israel would get a little baby lamb. 
And they'd take that little baby lamb and they'd care for it. And they'd love on that baby lamb. And they'd get attached to that baby lamb. That baby lamb became a part of their family. They loved that thing very deeply. They became attached. What was God doing? He was sending a message that he was attached to his son. He was attached to his son. Jesus was with God from the beginning. When God said, let us make man in our image, he was with him in the very beginning. And the word was made flesh. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. They were very attached. But God said, I want you to do something. I want every family on the 14th day to take that little lamb and you take a blade and you rip its little throat and you place it over a basin and let its blood flow down into that basin. You let it flow down into that basin and when you get that basin full of water, full of blood, excuse me, you get that basin full of blood, you go to every house, and you put that blood at the top. And you put that blood on each side of the door because the death angel's coming through. In every house, when that blood's at the top, and that blood's on each side. <laughs> when that blood's on the top, and when that blood's on each side, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. One day I'm gonna stand before God, and I'm going to heaven. Not because of anything I've done, but I'm glad that when he sees the blood, he'll pass over me. I want you to understand, it started with the blood. It's, it's sacred blood. It's shed blood. But get this, folks. It's saving blood. It's saving blood. See, in Genesis chapter 4, Look what it says. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. What does that mean, Pastor? It means just what you think it means. Adam and Eve got married. Got married. And Adam said to Eve, we're going to raise little Cain when we get able." You folks ever read the Bible? <laughs> Adam and Eve got married, and she conceived and bare Cain. And she said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Get this, keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought other through the ground and offered unto the Lord. What does it say? Well, what did, what did Cain do? He brought potatoes. He brought okra. He brought squash. He brought zucchini. And he offered it up as a sacrifice. He said, look what I've produced. Look what I've done. Look what I've worked. I worked. I watered this. I hold this. I fertilized this. Look what I've done. Verse 4 says, And Abel brought of the firstlings of the flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. You say, Pastor, what's the difference? Abel said, I bring a blood sacrifice. Cain said, I'm trying to do it myself. When the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
because the only thing that God's going to accept is the blood. Spurgeon said it best. Spurgeon said morality may keep you out of jail, but only the blood of Jesus will keep you out of hell. Morality may keep you out of jail, but only the blood of Jesus will keep you out of hell. One little girl was asked on one occasion, is there anything that God can't do? She said, oh, yes. God can't see my sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Now get this. Fifthly, it's supernatural blood. It's supernatural blood. You say, Pastor, an entire message on the blood of Jesus. Yes, and I ought to preach 10. Yes, I ought to preach 10 on the blood of Jesus. In a day when we have no preaching on the blood of Jesus, I ought to preach 10. Why does the blood of Jesus, why does it matter to me? How is it relevant to me? Let, me? let me tell you, first of all, folks. It gives you access to God. It gives you access to God. See, Ephesians 2.20 says that we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And ladies and gentlemen, it literally says this, that we had no hope. Not a little hope, but the Bible says we had no hope. Here's the layout of the temple. Number one, that's the Holy of Holies. Number one, that's where the high priest met with God. That's where the sacrifice for sin took place. That's where the blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat. The Holy of Holies. You say, well, that's interesting, Pastor. That's the place you want to be. Where were we? Number 12, the court of the Gentiles. We were in the court of the Gentiles, my friend, and if we even tried to go to the Holy of Holies, it was punishable by death. We were here. Here's where God was. The Scripture says there was no hope for us. But what does Ephesians 2.13 say? But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. <laughs> no, no, how, how did we get from 12 to, to, to 1? How did we get from 12 to where the priest was? Well, the Bible tells us this in Revelations chapter 1. Revelation 1 and 5 says, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He's washed us from our sins in his own blood. And look what verse 6 says. And had made us kings and priests unto God. He's made us kings and priests. Ladies and gentlemen, we went from number 12 to the, where the high priest was because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's why Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. And get this, folks, because of that, we can come boldly unto the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Today, you can talk to God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, you can come into the presence of God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That ought to make us want to clap our hands, lift our hands, praise the Lord, because the blood of Jesus Christ gives us access to God. 
Let me tell you the second thing the blood of Jesus Christ does. The blood of Jesus Christ, and I'm trying to hurry, it justifies. It justifies. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, look what Romans 5, 9 says. Look what Romans 5. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him being justified. Look, look, folks. There had to be payment for sin. It either had to be pardoned in Christ or punished in hell. There had to be payment. How were we saved from wrath? Look, we were justified by the blood. What does that word justified mean? It means just as if you never sinned. Just, no, you didn't hear me. Just as if you never sinned. As far as God's concerned, it never happened. You were justified. God said, as far as I'm concerned, it never happened because they have accepted the blood of the Lamb and because they've accepted the blood of the Lamb, they've been justified. That make a backslid Baptist shout, folks. I'm sorry for getting excited, but when I think about what the Lord has done for me, I just can't not get excited, folks. Because he didn't do it just for you. He did it for me too. So the blood gives me access to God. The blood justifies. Let me tell you something else. The blood heals. <laughs> First Peter 2 and 24 says, get this, folks. By his stripes, we are healed. Now, every time when you think about healing, most people think about physical. They immediately jump to physical. But folks, this is emotional. This is mental. Because get this, for every one person that's under a doctor's care for physical problems, there are three people under a doctor's care for emotional problems. But there's a verse that God showed me it's in Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself, look, without spot to God, look at this, purge your conscience. Purge your conscience. Look, folks, there's people living in the past there's people living with guilt. There's people living with shame. There's, there's people living with bad memories. There's people beating themselves up. There's events that they can't get away from. But folks, let me tell you something. Apparently, the blood of Jesus Christ can purge our consciences. It can purge our consciences. It can purge our minds. Many people's mind needs the blood of Jesus Christ. God, we need to just say, Lord, we need the blood. I need the blood to purge my mind, God. I need the blood. I can't, I can't seem to get past what's happened. I've got bitterness. I, I've got malice. I've got shame. I've got guilt. I, I, oh, Lord, I, I just, it just stays with me. I can't get past it, God. I beat myself up. I beat myself up. I beat myself up. It keeps coming back. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to live with it. You say, Pastor Minnie, what advice can you give? me. The only advice I would say to you, we come to the precious Holy Spirit. We come to Jesus and we say, Lord, I ask you to purge my mind with your precious blood. There was a man named William Cooper. William Cooper attempted suicide three times. Get this, I want, I want every person to hear me. Because you struggle with depression does not mean you're less than as a Christian. Amen. Because you struggle with depression doesn't mean if you're a Christian, you'll automatically be exempt from it. He battled depression. He battled issues. 
He'd walk into a room and he'd have panic attacks. And they ask, Mr. Cooper, how did you get over it? And he said, the blood of Jesus purged my conscience. And he said, I wrote a song after the blood of Jesus purged my conscience. This was the song. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stain. And the enemy wants to stain people's minds. He wants to stain people's minds. But only the blood of Jesus Christ can purge it. All I'm trying to say, folks, the blood gives us access to God. The blood justifies. The blood heals. Let me tell you something else the blood does, and I'm almost done. The blood cleanses. The blood cleanses. Look what 1 John 1 and 7 says. But if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, you have fellowship one with another. Look. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth, cleanseth us from all sin. I'm going to give you a news flash. After I got saved, I've sinned. Look here, folks. Somebody said, if I got what I deserved before I got saved, I'd be in hell. You look at your preacher. If I got what I deserved since I've been saved, I'd be in hell. I've sinned. You say, well, Pastor, why, why, why do you feel comfortable saying that? Because I know that lady I'm looking at right now, she has too. And that man I'm looking at right now, he has too. We all have. I'm grateful that verse doesn't say his son had cleansed, but it cleanseth. It's in the present tense. What's it saying? The blood of Christ will never lose its power. Amen. <laughs> it will never lose the blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power because, folks, it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. There's one other thing I want you to see the blood does. The blood gives us power over Satan. The blood gives us power over Satan. Revelation 12 and 11 says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> you say, Pastor Benny, I've got some things going on that I just can't get over. Yes, you can. You can get over. You can get past it. You can be a victor because of the blood of Jesus Christ. You can overcome it because of the power and because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Satan is no match for the blood of Jesus. Satan is no match for the blood of Jesus. I want to report to you, Satan can't handle the blood of Jesus. Satan can't combat the blood of Jesus. Satan's not wanting close to the blood of Jesus. Hey, here's a thought. If Satan could get under the blood of Jesus, he'd be a saved devil, amen? But he can't get under the blood of Jesus. He's no match for the blood of Jesus. Oh, you said, Pastor, I need power in my life. There's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you say, oh, Brother Benny, I'm, he's beat me up. No, no, no. There's power in the blood of Jesus, sister. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Satan's no match for the blood of Jesus. Napoleon Bonaparte was celebrating. He was with his generals. 
And he had a table. And he had a map on the table. And he had a wand. And he was pointing to all the countries that he had conquered. He pointed to Italy. He pointed to Poland. He pointed to Sweden. He pointed to Switzerland. He pointed to Holland. And then there was on that map England. And to identify England on that map, it was just a red dot. And he took that wand and he put it on that red dot. And he said, if it had not been for that red dot, I could have conquered the world. But because of that red dot, I've been conquered. I believe Satan said, had it not been for that red dot, had it not been for that hill called Calvary, had it not been for the blood of the Lamb, I could have conquered them all. But ladies and gentlemen, because of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're more than conquerors. Amen? Because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ, this world's not our home. Heaven's our home. Because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ, we will not be defeated. Because if God be for us, who can be against us because of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we honor the blood by getting up on our feet, putting our hands together, praising the Lord for his precious blood.